Hi, it's Ramsey Dewey at the JX Fight Club in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with Coach. Today we have a question from our friend Daniel Cherry, who is frustrated because he's not able to do pull-ups. Now he says he's a bigger guy, he's about 97 kilos and about 177 centimeters tall, so a heavy set guy. And his deadlifts are really good, he's strong in the squat too. His powerlifting seems pretty good, but um, that pull-up is eluding him and it's frustrating him to no end. So what to do? Any tips? Yeah, I got some tips. Check this out. So you want to do a pull-up, but you can't do one. This was me for the longest time. I could not pull myself up for the life of me. Kicking and bucking and squirming couldn't do it. But hey, you look at me now. I can do pull-ups. So what made the difference? Well, I went about it the hard way. So I'm going to teach you an easier way. A simple thing called modifying exercises you can't do until you actually can do them. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the grips. Because the grip you use on the pull-up, whether it's a pull-up, a chin-up, or a neutral grip, is going to change it substantially. Here, I'm doing a chin-up with the palms facing me. This is much easier than doing a pull-up. So you might want to try this one first. Once you can do chin-ups, then advance to pull-ups. Now the overhand grip versus the neutral grip makes a big difference as well. The overhand grip on the outside is the hardest, by far. A neutral grip like this with parallel bars makes it a lot easier. As in a whole lot easier. A lot less stress on the shoulders. And a lot more stress on the lats, the muscles in the back. So if you have access to a pull-up bar that gives you a neutral grip, do it. Now the next thing is negatives. Find a chair, walk up that chair, Grab a hold of those bars and lower yourself as slowly as you can, trying to pull yourself up the bar even if you can't. Lower yourself slowly, get that negative portion of the exercise. This is super important. This is half of the exercise. I know a lot of guys think they're doing a whole bunch of pull-ups when they pull themselves up and then just drop down and bounce back up again. But that's not it, you're robbing yourself out of half of the exercise if you skip the negative. So if you can't do the positive, the pull-up part, focus on the lower yourself down. Because this is also building strength. This is half the strength and half the muscle that you're going to build during the pull-up. So, get that chair, walk off the edge, lower yourself slowly. Now when you start out, you might just flop down, but pull as hard as you can until you can slowly descend. I'd recommend do several sets of 10 or 12 or 20 of these whenever you can. I mean, this is an exercise you can do almost on a daily basis. Yeah, this negative is such a huge, huge part of my pull-up program to get people who can't do pull-ups to get to the point where they can do their first pull-up. I would recommend this to everybody. Absolutely everybody. Next, a resistance band. If you have one of those big rubber bands and tie it in a lark's head knot like this over a bar, whatever bar you have, and then use this for an assist. Now these bands come in different uh, strengths, so if you're not particularly strong in the pull-up, use a thicker one. If you are pretty close, use a thinner one. And if you're not sure where, where you are, get a few different ones, and you'll find it will help you up quite a bit, and you'll be able to do a lot more pull-ups than you previously could. But at the same time, this takes a lot of the stress off of the abdominal muscles. And we're going to address that later because the pull-up is largely an abdominal exercise. If I could only do three resistance training exercises for the rest of my life, they would be the squat, the deadlift, and the pull-up. Specifically because those are the exercises that hit most of the muscles in the body at once. The pull-up is amazing because it will work your back, your arms, and your core simultaneously specifically the core, as it connects to the legs. Next, floor drags. If you're super weak and you have no equipment at all, you probably have access to a floor somewhere in this world which you can drag yourself with, with your arms. I'd recommend wear a long sleeve shirt if you've got a rough floor, otherwise you might skin up the elbows. But again, almost anybody can do this exercise, and if you can't actually drag yourself off the floor, you can cheat a little bit and push with your big toes until you can. And then when that gets easy, lift up your feet like this. Yeah. Next, assist yourself, if you don't have a band, by jumping up. 
Grab the bars, jump yourself up as you pull, and then lower yourself slowly, getting the negative portion of that exercise, you know, in case you don't have a chair. So you don't have to do all of these exercises, but do the ones that you can. Next is the lockout. So either pull yourself up at the top or walk off the chair or jump up there and hang, locked out in the top of either the chin up or the pull up position. Flexing everything, hold it for as long as you can, and the next time you do it, try to hold it a little bit longer. And it's a fantastic exercise. Next, a lot of people can't do a pull up because they lack a little bit of strength in their arms. So the hammer curl is an excellent assistive exercise. Why? Because it's going to work the muscles in the forearm that are going to allow you to get that, that first 20% of the pull up so that you can finally engage your lats and, and get the back to work. Now the pull-up again is primarily a back exercise, but the arms do come into play. So you do need a certain level of strength in the forearms to make it easy enough to bridge that gap, to cross that threshold that is going to allow you to get that first pull-up. So yeah, do some hammer curls, but not in the squat rack, guys. Keep your curls out of the squat rack. All right, what's next? Leg and knee raises. These will address the issue of core strength in a great degree. Lift the knees as high as you can and then extend the legs out. You'll see this will engage the core the same way that the core is engaged while you do pull-ups. Again, pull-ups are a fantastic abdominal exercise, but if you can't pull yourself up yet, at least you can still work your abs. Again, lift the knees and extend the legs and you will feel the abdominal muscles cooperating. Well, maybe not at first, but eventually they will. If any of these exercises are difficult, modify. If you can't get your knees all the way up, lift them up as much as you can. Next, incline pull-ups. You can get some dip bars like this for a neutral grip incline pull-up. Lie prone on the floor and pull yourself up at an angle. So if you can't do a full pull-up, this is much, much easier. And you can adjust the height of the bars and I'm going to give you some other options just in case you don't have a dip rack. If you have access to a barbell and something to put the barbell on and a floor or some similar bar to this, you can pull yourself up doing incline pull-ups, strengthening a lot of the same muscles that we will use for a regular pull-up. Again, when we cannot do the full exercise, we modify until we can. Here I'm using a 50 millimeter thick bar to work my grip strength a little more. Because again, the bar that you are using for pull-ups is going to largely determine how difficult or easy it is. The thicker the bar, the harder it's going to be to pull. Here's a Swiss bar working neutral grip pull-ups, well, incline pull-ups from different widths. See, the wider the grip, generally the harder a pull-up is, the narrower the grip, generally the easier it becomes. Well, within reason, once we get to the center, it gets a little bit harder again. So if you have access to a Swiss, a Swiss bar like this, sometimes called a football bar, yeah, this can be a, a great accessory exercise to help you get that first pull-up. Now, once you can do that first pull-up, add some weight. Now, the reason I'm showing this in how to do your first pull-up exercise is to show that weight makes a huge difference. See, without any weight attached to me, I can easily do 10 pull-ups and I can struggle through the next five, and if I'm really, really motivated, I can do some really lousy pull-ups, maybe up to like 17 or 18, just barely inching over the bar, but the more weight I add, the harder it becomes. So when I have 15 kilos strapped to me, how many is that, two? Let's see if I can get number three out there. Struggling, uh, I didn't get up for number three. So the more you weigh, the harder pull-ups are. Let's see how many pull-ups I can do with 20 kilos strapped to me. Up, up, up. I got one. Can I do two? Uh, not happening. Yeah, seriously, the more you weigh, the harder pull-ups are. It's not to say that if you weigh a lot, can I do it with 25? Getting there, getting there. Oh, not quite, didn't clear the bar, made it about two-thirds of the way up. Now, just for contrast, I'm strapping 50 kilos onto this belt here just to show you where a lot of you already are right now, if you can't do a pull-up, I mean, for me, this is an impossible weight right now. 
But if I hang and I pull and I give it 100% pulling as hard as I can, I am still developing those muscles. I am still developing that strength. So hang in there, guys. Keep working those hang pulls because you will get stronger doing that. L-sit pull-ups. Once you can do that full pull-up, extend your legs out straight and you'll find, whoa, pull-ups are way harder than I thought because you'll be engaging your abdominals much, much more than you would doing a, a standard pull-up with your legs hanging or lifted up behind you. So L-sit pull-ups, fantastic exercise. Now, kipping pull-ups like the kind CrossFitters do, these are not real pull-ups. They are not a substitute for pull-ups. As you can see right here in this clip, not a single pull-up was done. I am kicking my legs up to get my arms into a bent position so I can cheat my way up at the top. Now, I'm not going to say if this is an assistive exercise because it's, it's really not working the same muscles as a strict pull-up. So don't even worry about that. Keep your pull-ups strict all the way up and all the way down, all the way up and all the way down. That simple. Now, Daniel, that being said, I'm going to tell you what I first did to learn to do pull-ups was way different than what I'm going to show you. It was more inefficient. It was one of those mind over matter type of things. I was a really, really weak, scrawny kid. And I decided perhaps if I can do push-ups and pull-ups and things like that, I might get stronger. And the bullies at school won't push me around so much. So we had this old swing set without any swings on it in our backyard. And it was made out of pipes about that big around, which are really hard to grip onto. But I, I was a kid, I didn't really know. So I would jump up there and I would grab a hold of those, those pipes and I would try to pull myself up and I couldn't. And I would just hang there for as long as I could until my hands would give out, till my grip would give out, and then I would fall off. And the next day I would come back and I would do it again. Maybe hold on a tiny bit longer, and I would do it again. And it was exhausting, and whew, it was painful. But after three months, I noticed I started to move a little bit. My arms went from locked out to being able to bend the elbows a little and shrug the shoulders up a little. But I, So I kept doing it. And I would just hang there and pull until my arms would shake and shake, and I couldn't pull anymore until I had to let go. But eventually, I don't remember how long it was, somewhere between three and six months, eventually I started making it close to the top. And I remember one day I went out there determined, I am going to make it to the top of this bar. So I went out there, I hung on the thing and I pulled and I pulled and I just summoned up every ounce of willpower I had to do something I was not currently physically able to do, to pull myself up over there. And I started to scream, ah, and I got up there. Now, I didn't learn until many, many years later that there is a connection between breath and movement. I read a study, an actual scientific study, on the effect of shouting, screaming, even swearing, while exercising, that it can actually increase your strength by up to 20%. So if you're close to the top of that movement, you can't quite budget. Ah! Scream yourself up over the top. Now, you will get kicked out of a Planet Fitness if that's where you're doing pull-ups. But, in the long run, it's probably worth it. After all, their slogan is, we are not a gym, we're Planet Fitness. Not sponsored by Planet Fitness. So, nothing against people who go there, nothing against people who go there. Anything that gets you off the couch and moving, that's good. Rule number one of fitness, do something. At the same time, the world's foremost fitness-themed pizza buffet, I'm not sure what to say about that. A few issues there, a few issues. So start somewhere, move up. Now, as far as being a bigger guy, the heavier you are, the harder it is to do pull-ups. You can see in this video I made, <sighs> strapped some weights on that belt, and the more weight there was, the fewer pull-ups I could do. Now, without any weights on me, I can easily do 10 pull-ups, and I can eke out like five more, struggling a little bit. And if I really, really have to, maybe, maybe one or two more than that. But as soon as I put the weight on, that number goes down a lot. So one thing I did in this video was put on an impossible weight. I added 50 kilos, and with 50 extra kilos around me, I can't do a single pull-up. Can't even move an inch. 
but that is a very important exercise. To go to that point where you can't move, where you can't do it, and you try anyway. There's an old story I heard in church once. It's not necessarily a religious story, it's not a Bible story, it's not from scripture, but I heard it in church once. Uh, this man who prayed to God for strength. And God said, see that big old rock, that boulder? Push it. So the man went over to the rock and he pushed, and the boulder would not move. But he trusted God who told him. And so he pushed, and he pushed, and he pushed, and he spent many days and many months and many years pushing this rock. And he felt that he had failed because the rock had not budged. So he cried out and he said, God, what's going on here? You told me to push the rock and I can't push it. And the Lord replied and said, well, look at yourself. The objective, the purpose was not to move the rock. It was to move you. You have now moved. You have now changed. You are now stronger than you once were. And the man looked at his reflection and lo and behold, he had muscles. Yeah, totally not a Bible story. But <laughs> there's a true principle there. If we are flexing everything we have, everything we've got, putting 100% into it, guess what? We get stronger. And it is, it's also important to remember, improvement does not come from repetition to repetition. It comes from sleep to sleep. So do some pull-ups, rest. Do some pull-ups, rest. And each day, focus on being 1% better. You might not be able to do a pull-up for a long time. I've seen this a lot. I've had so many students who struggle with pull-ups. I think it's one of the, the great problems of our society because we are genetically designed to do pull-ups. Newborn infants can do hang pulls with a single arm. I wouldn't recommend test it out on your baby, but they are able to do that. It is a survival instinct. And if they continue to train their pulling and gripping strength, they get better and they get stronger. But if we don't, we lose it over time. Weird, huh? But here's the thing. We can get it back if we exercise it again. Because our bodies will adapt to the demands we put on them. Weird, right? We ask our body to do something, grab this bar and pull your weight up over there, and eventually the body will adapt if we keep asking it long enough, persistently enough, consistently enough. Consistency is key, my friend. But again, the more you weigh, and this is important, the more you weigh, the harder it will be to do pull-ups. So, this is, might come off sounding kind of weird, but one of the secrets to doing pull-ups is weigh less. Hmm. Hmm. How do you do that? Well, the simplest way, eat a little differently and move a little differently. You might say, eat less and move more, but I would say differently. And not even weigh less, but weigh differently. Change your body composition. So if you have an extra 10 kilos of adipose tissue, of body fat that is not necessarily contributing to helping you do that pull-up, and maybe you weigh 90 kilos or something like that, and you got this 10 extra kilos of fat weighing you down that's not helping. Well, how about displace that with a little more muscle? See, that? now you got five extra kilos of pulling muscle to pull with. And you might weigh the same, but you'd be better bringing yourself up over that bar. So patience is paramount. Patience is absolutely key. I know something that held me back Years ago, I signed up at a Gold's gym in the United States, and Gold's is a fantastic gym. They've got great equipment. They've got branches everywhere. Not sponsored by Gold's gym, but it is a good gym. And I remember going there, and I wanted to do pull-ups, but I could only do a couple at the time. I could do one or two. And I thought, well, all these people are watching. If I get on the pull-up bar and do one or two pull-ups and then fail after that, Oh man, those cute girls over there, they won't be impressed. Or that, that big buff dude over there is going to think I'm a wimp. Who cares? Well, obviously, young men care because we got that young man's ego, right? But we shouldn't. 
You really shouldn't. So one thing that keeps people away from pull-ups at the gym is, is that, because they can only do a couple, or, or their number's unimpressive, or they can't do any at all, and so they're afraid to touch the bar because of how people might judge them, like, oh, he's not strong, he's not tough, he's not like me, whatever. Whatever goes on in our head preventing us from doing that exercise. So cut that out. Now, if you can only do zero, one, two, a couple pull-ups, and you want to increase that number, here's how. Do what you can, do that one pull-up, do that half a pull-up, do that struggling shaky arm thing without getting up over the bar, and then go do something else for five minutes. Then come back to that pull-up bar and do it again. And go do something else for five minutes while your, your muscles recover. And then come back and do it again. And then by the end of the, of the day, let's say you can only do one pull-up. At the end of the day, you've done that 20 times, you've done 20 pull-ups. How many guys go to the gym and do 20 pull-ups in a row? Most bigger guys don't because most bigger guys can't. And I've got a, a student uh, I do private training with every week uh, in a very similar situation to you, my friend. And he's a bigger guy and he's a strong dude. And he can pull enormous numbers on the deadlift and he's got a respectable squat. But he can't do a single pull-up because he's too heavy to pull up his own weight. So, yeah, but what I have him do, pull up modifications, assistive exercises, and hang pulls trying to pull up his own weight. Because if you are engaging the muscles, you are working them. Do you remember the old Marvel comics? Like back in the 70s, early 80s, they used to have this advertisement for the Charles Atlas strength training program where there was this comic advertisement with a kid at the beach with his girlfriend and a big bully comes up and kicks sand in his face and steals his girlfriend. And then the bully goes home and he's reading a comic book and he sees the exact same ad that you're reading. He's like, oh, I'm going to order that. So he orders it, he sends in a dollar and they send him the, the book. And we don't know what's in the book unless you've read it. I'll tell you in a minute what's in there. But in the next panel, after months of training, he's big and he's strong and he goes back to the beach and he finds the bully with his girlfriend and he beats up the bully, boom, punches him in the face, takes his girlfriend back and they all live happily ever after. That's the way it should be, right? One for the good guys. Woo! <laughs> but what was actually in that book? What was Charles Atlas Strength Training Program? Well, it was, it was flexing. It was basically holding a pose grabbing your arm right here and pushing down and then pulling up here to work the bicep without any weights at all, no weights. Then you'd grab your other bicep and you would flex and I'd be pushing in this direction and I would be pulling in this direction. So I'm engaging all of these muscles, flexing every muscle in the body. And then I'd, you'd do things like, you know, grip here and then pull, ah, flexing everything and grip here and pull and push. And you know, all these, all these, um, what is the word I'm looking for, man? Concentric, eccentric, I always get those confused. Isometric, I don't remember. Anyway, who knows the jargon? There are like 12 of out there typing the comments like, you should know this, you sh you're supposed to have a degree in this. And yeah, I do, but come on. Um, so essentially flexing that muscle as hard as you can is doing something, it's working it. So if you were hanging on the bar, flexing those muscles as hard as you can, trying to pull your shoulder blades together, trying to pull, shrug those shoulders up here. Guess what, eventually they get stronger. And persist at it enough, and it will happen. There are very few things I can promise you in life, but that is one of them. Persist at it enough, consistently, day after day, week after week, month after month, and even if you don't see any results, keep at it until it happens. Thank you for watching. Now get out there and train.